My interest in trains and country music uh, started at the same time, really. My dad worked for the Katy Railroad uh, in Texas, and he also played fiddle. And we kind of grew up without a radio or an old Victrola. And, and about the only entertainment we had musically wise was what my dad uh, provided. And this was when he got off the work of the railroad. He was a section hand on the railroad. My dad could play all the songs. Of course, most of the songs that we knew were old hymns out of the hymn book or something. But uh, it, was a, it was a fun time. And uh, every now and then, we'd have to stop as a, one of the Katy Railroad trains rumbled by. My dad. Uh, also sharecropped, and, and we worked for a, a guy named Dr. Simpson. And Dr. Simpson, when I was a little bitty kid, uh, he'd give me a penny for however far I could count. Well, it didn't take me very long till I could count for a long way, so he stopped that and he'd give me a penny for every song I could sing. And that kind of really was the first time that I ever knew that you could get paid for singing. <laughs> So I, I learned a lot of songs. <laughs> I have a favorite train song of mine, and, and, and I guess it's probably the greatest train song that was ever written. It's called The Wabash Cannonball. Um, and there's so many reasons for liking The Wabash <laughs> Cannonball. It, it, it's, it's, you could dance to that song. You could, uh, you could tap your feet to it. Uh, it's got words that people understand. It's got a rhythm like the train, you know, and uh, I do the train whistle in the, you know, you can put it in the song, take it out. Uh, it's a fun song to work and play with. There was something magical about a train. From the day they invented the first train, when the rocket first rolled down the, the uh, uh, tracks, I guess you could hear almost your own heartbeat in a train. And, and, and of course, they were so visible. Uh, everybody saw a train when this first started out. Not very many people ever got to see a steamship unless you lived on the coast. And then you didn't get to see it very close, but a train went by your house. <laughs> I have a music show called the Boxcar Willie Theater in Branson, Missouri. And uh, I have a great ten-piece band called the Texas Trainmen. We perform six nights a week plus two matinees and it's a country music show. The Texas Trainmen, some of them have been with me for 11 years. They've traveled with me all over the world. The Boxcar Willie Museum is something is my pride and joy. I could talk all day long about this museum. I think there's 74 cases they're four by eight by a foot deep. And each case is all lit up. And in that case, each case, is things that you, the people, and the fans of Boxcar Willie have presented me, have gave me. There's railroad lanterns in here that belong to some people's grandpas. Mr. Fred Carpenter from Peru, Indiana, gave me the keys to the Wabash Cannonball. He hand-fired it. There's switches, locks, telegraphers, keys, and receivers. There's gold records that I have uh, earned through the years. Uh, there's pictures that I have rubbed elbows and pins and badges of all kinds. There's statues, there's crocheted objects in here, things like that. Uh, and, it's, and, it's, and it's beautifully displayed. We're very proud of it. A lot of people ask me what's in the future for Boxcar Willie. Uh, I don't have any hard set plans to ever get out of the entertainment business. Roy Acuff's 88 years old, still makes five shows a weekend at the Grand Ole Opry. I thought I'd, if, if the good Lord's willing, I'll just stick around till I'm about 80 or 85 and then make some plans as to what I'm going to do down the road. The sun is setting on a time long ago on cowboys and horses on trains and hobos The pages of time They turn so endlessly Things that we love Are 
Yes, cowboys and horses 